We don't do philosophy in this uh, channel. Good. Okay? We're done. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> we do physics, but we have to distinguish philosophy from physics. And there's a lot of gray area because philosophy has a long tradition dating all the way at least till the Greeks, if not earlier, you know. And so the problem is that a lot of the subjects that belong strictly to physics fell under philosophy because the Greeks treated them under philosophy, specifically ontology. What is ontology? Well, it's the study of existence, to, to put it uh, succinctly. Okay, so, but where do I have to start? Well, I'm going to start in a place that you might say, Bill, you're crazy. Why are you starting here? I'm going to start at my heroes, okay? And because it's got a little bit of context in what I'm going to say today. I'm going to start at who my heroes were when I was a kid, okay? And I'm talking about when I was about 15 years old, I got into communism, okay? And uh, I was head over heels with communism, right? And these were my heroes, you know, Marx, Lenin, and Fidel Castro. And these heroes lasted in my heart for about 25 years. You couldn't find uglier pictures of them? <laughs> and, then, uh, and then what happened? Well, uh, eventually, you know, I grew out of them, okay? And uh, I had other heroes, and these were two other heroes, Madeline Murray O'Hare, who was the founder of American Atheist, and Carl Sagan, which was also an atheist. And I grew out of atheism as well, so these two stopped being my heroes, specifically Sagan, because uh, Sagan just had nonsense even even in his extraterrestrial stuff you know the the fact that he wanted to uh, be in contact with another civilization and travel through the stars and etc well all that was nonsense together with you know what he proposed which was quantum mechanics and general relativity so you know i have no uh no fondness anymore of mr sagan uh, he, i think he was an excellent teacher but he was a lousy uh being called physicist if if i call them mathematicians mathematics Okay. Now did he actually do mathematics. Yeah, yeah, he, he, yeah, yeah. He was uh, he he did uh, mathematics. Okay. I also had these two guys, which was Babe Ruth and uh, Hank Aaron, and I grew out of them. They were my heroes when I was a kid. I was specifically collecting baseball cards, but they stopped being my heroes simply because I stopped paying attention to baseball and moved on to soccer. My point here is that you know we all have our heroes, especially when we're young. They could be your father and mother, for all we know. You know, they could be maybe your teacher, whoever, and sometimes we grow out of them and we grow out of them mainly because we find something different in life maybe through uh, education experience whatever you want to call it you know you go through life and then you start changing your mind about things and i changed my mind about communism i changed my mind about atheism and uh about baseball <laughs> okay so all I'm saying, <laughs> yeah keep that in mind today okay because i'm going to get back to that issue okay but let's start with uh, i'm going to start with one of the questions that someone made okay regarding philosophy this is where we'll start and he said uh, uh so to say here philosophy is equal anthropology biology sociology psychology i'm a bit lost and um all i can say there is that you know there are aspects of anthropology that fall under physics and aspects which fall under philosophy for this we're going to need to define what philosophy is to know what aspects of a given discipline fall under one or the other Okay, so uh, before you reach a conclusion and say, what do you mean, uh, philosophy includes anthropology and biology and everything? No, let's, let's wait till we have a definition, then we'll be able to pigeonhole these things and put them in the right place. Okay? Well, did you tell them the fight we had two days ago? <laughs> about uh, we, we always argue before we come here. Okay? Day one that I got here, we started <laughs> just tearing the walls down about this topic. He wanted to destroy my, my notion of philosophy. I would not let him. No, I thought I won, I won that discussion, you know. <laughs> I, I vote for my version of it. Anyways, um, here's uh, another individual, and uh, uh, they came in there with a, an issue that essentially triggered the discussion today, okay? And says the following, uh, she, referring to Ayn Rand, Ayn Rand, as some people call her, I call Ayn Rand, uh, was a philosopher, and the best one at that. Well, again, uh, we won't know until we define the word philosophy. We won't know who a philosophy philosopher is until we define what philosophy is. Yeah, that's actually one of the questions. What is your definition of philosophy? Well, you got to have <laughs> a little we'll patience. Well, we'll get there. We'll get yeah. there. <laughs> okay. Uh, continue. says, so she was dealing, referring to Ayn Rand, right? She was dealing with ideas, morality, and po politics, which pertain only to human life and choice. Yeah, the issue is that morality and politics are religion. They fall under religion. They don't fall under philosophy at all, as we will see today. Okay. De once we define this word, this key word, okay, then we'll we'll be able to put in the right cubbyhole that morality and politics have nothing at all to do with philosophy. If that's what Ayn Rand did, 
She was giving you recommendations. She was giving you her opinions. And that's how we define religion. Opinions. Beliefs. Okay? Uh, subjectivity. Okay? Ayn Rand was explaining the universe. No, absolutely not. Even if she was, which she wasn't, okay? Even if she was, then she would be a physicist. Because if you explain the universe, meaning how the universe works, you are, do you are doing physics. You're not doing philosophy. Again, no such thing as ontology, no such thing as epistemology. There's only philosophy and physics. Okay, two branches, as we will see in a minute, okay? Uh, but this is what we're going to argue, okay? There's only two branches. One is physics, the other one is philosophy, okay? And if you uh, are explaining how the universe works, you are squarely in the realm of physics, okay? So if you say, God made the universe, for example, you're not doing religion, you're not doing uh, philosophy, you're doing physics. You're telling me how the universe came to be, and I want a mechanism for you to explain how, the, how God made the universe, okay? We need to see the mechanism, okay? Now, if you ask, why did God make the universe. Now you're talking about philosophy because again, it's, as we will see, it deals with purposes and reasons. Did you ever make the like branch chart or the flow chart? Yeah, yeah, we're going to see that in a minute. Uh, anyways, uh, to conscious entities. She was explaining the universe to conscious entities. Well, who else are you going to explain it to if not to conscious entities? I mean, uh, do you explain, you can say uh, that you explain it to a dog, okay? And a dog, sometimes we say the dog is conscious, but what, we, what we're saying when we use it in that context, we're saying it's alive. You know, it's still conscious, like, you know, maybe it's had an accident. Sentient, sentient. Yeah, it's, right. And we should not confuse that with consciousness, you know, human consciousness. But if you don't explain it to a conscious individual, who else are you going to explain it to? I mean, <laughs> a sleeping guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's not conscious. Yeah, he was <laughs> unconscious. His dreams. So, yeah, it's got to be to a conscious person. Okay, so um, what's the problem? The problem is that no one has ever defined the word philosophy in the last 3,000 years, beginning with the Greeks and ending specifically with the Stanford Encyclopedia of what? Philosophy. Here we go with someone it. tried. <laughs> oh, you'll see in a minute. <laughs> okay, so, oh, hold it. Give me a second here, fell on the other side. Sometimes it happens. You need a better. Yeah. You got to grab it just right. Okay, anyways, this is from the dictionary.com, okay? What is philosophy according to dictionary, okay? This is our current definition. After 3,000 years, this is what we ended up with. The rational investigation of the truths. Truths? Truths are beliefs. You know, what's truth to you is a lie to me. Okay. Oh boy, a lot and, of people have a fight with uh, that I know, one. I know they're going to have a fight with <laughs> And principles of being, knowledge, or conduct. Well, knowledge behavior. is belief, again, and uh, conduct could be because now we're talking about behavior. But see, when you throw all these things in there, you say, well, it, it involves being and knowledge and conduct and behavior. When you throw everything in there just to cover all the bases, it's easier to tear your definition down. you got to limit your wording so it doesn't it's not so broad because when you make it so broad then you can put in anything in there you can say it deals with ontology well, it becomes it deals, meaningless well one is that but it's like god if god means everything then god means nothing so you kind of have to you know shorten the definition of god if you're going to use them in some rational way if you say god is everything well you know then what is god you know how can you use that and uh, then it's got two other definitions there a particular system of thought which is what most people understand by philosophy it's his philosophy well, if that's the definition or the notion you have of philosophy, we have 8 billion philosophers on the planet because everybody has a way of thinking and recommendations of how you should live and about politics and about religion. So if philosophy is just a way of thinking, it's, it's a meaningless word. Okay? We all have a way of thinking. And then the other one is guidance in practical affairs. Those are recommendations. And again, it's like, hey, this is how you should live. This is who you should vote for, you know, and that sort of thing. Well, those are opinions. And if it's opinions, and then when you say that you study philosophy at the university, what do you really mean? I mean, what are you studying? Are you studying recommendations? Hopefully you're studying something a little more serious than just an opinion, a recommendation to someone of how they should live, who should they, they should vote for, or whatever. Well, that's right? serious to a lot of people. I'm sorry? That's serious to a lot of people. People yeah, take that seriously. Well, yeah, I know, but my point it's is not that objective, you're it? not going to study. This is what I'm saying. If you go to the university to study philosophy because you're going to take all these courses related to philosophy, you cannot say, well, I studied philosophy. What did you study? Well, I studied recommendations. I mean, that, hopefully, you, you, every, yeah, but everybody can have a recommendation, no problem there. But what are you going to do, study recommendations? I mean, that's this, what people do. Yeah, I know. And this is the problem. This is why we, that's why I want to restrict the definition of uh, philosophy to that first one there, to conduct. I'm going to just chop only that piece in there. That's what I'm going to be doing today, okay? Whether you like it or not. Well, it turns we'll it into an actual word because otherwise it has no meaning. If it has no borders, if philosophy covers all subjects, then what's the point of the word? In fact, I'm going to get that, that also. If you say, That's if, an important if, point if, that you made If it there. goes straight to behaviors and conduct, then you can... Then, then we know what we're talking about when we say philosophy. You're not talking about biology. You're not talking about chemistry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. talking about purposes and reasons. Right. 
Okay, and this is the definition from the Wikipedia. Love of wisdom, it, it, you know, what it meant, I guess, from the Greeks or how it was translated from the Greek. Love of wisdom, you know, what is that? Uh, I, I love to be wise. I mean, I love wise men. Uh, what does that mean? And then you see the word wisdom at the bottom, uh, also, I think, from the Wikipedia. And is associated with attributes such as, and they give one, unbiased judgment. You know, that's like a... Uh, unbiased uh, judgment is an un unbiased, oxymoron. Yeah, it's an oxymoron because uh, they're both uh, opinions. <laughs> Unbiased is unbiased means that you're biased. That's what unbiased means. No judgment means you're unbiased. <laughs> well, but both of them really, mean. because unbiased means that I mean, what is there that is unbiased? Uh, is it's just the opposite of biased, which means it's the same thing. I mean, you know, is it, are we saying objective judgment? How can there be an objective yeah. judgment? That's, so that's, that's definitely an oxymoron. Yeah. Unbiased judgment. The whole point of judgment is one thing is better than the other. How do you know that if you're not biased? Then you have self-knowledge. Knowledge is belief. I covered that in the past. A lot of people don't like that. But yeah, knowledge is belief. In fact, uh, Plato defined it justified true belief, or that's how it was translated. That's what came to our days from Plato, the interpretation of Plato, that he was saying justified true belief. That's what knowledge is. And that last word, belief, means that knowledge is a synonym of belief. And I've gone through that in the past. A lot of people don't like it, but that's the bottom line. Until you can come up with a better mousetrap, that's, that stays there. You're saying uh, belief and knowledge are the same. When I know something, yeah. like I knew, I knew for a fact that communism was right. And I knew it for a fact. Uh, that lasted 25 years. Then my knowledge went away. Well, that's a good point. I, I, I once had, me, my brother and I once had a big discussion with friends of ours. Uh -huh. And my brother really <laughs> got a good, good one on them where he was talking about the, I mean, flat earth. I mean, now, no, I think he was talking about Columbus. Okay. Going to the New World, where uh -huh. everyone knew that there that nothing was over there, until we knew Found that some things was over there. <laughs> so it's like, well, how do we know or do we not know? Is it a belief? You know all that stuff. Anyways, uh, these definitions are not solid. Absolutely not. And if this is what came up, what we came up with after three thousand years, we don't really have a good definition of philosophy. So if uh, if we're going to decide whether, for example, Ayn Rand or Aristotle were uh, philosophers, let's first define philosophy in a rational scientific ma manner, in a way that we can use it consistently, right? Uh, so that we can say, yeah, this guy was a philosopher, this guy was not. I'll give because otherwise, two. we're all philosophers. I'll give my two cents at the end. Okay. To, yeah, to, okay. not, to not, you know, waste, okay. waste everyone's time. Yeah. Uh, that's when I shut the <laughs> show and cut The truth comes at the end. <laughs> okay, so what is the problem? The problem is we have not defined, uh, as, as I'm going to argue today, we have not defined philosophy in 3,000 years in a way that is scientific, in the way we can use it consistently, in a way that you can actually say that when you go to the university, you study philosophy and you come out being a philosopher, for example, right? Just an example. Uh, and so if we're going to say that Ayn Rand or Aristotle were philosophers, we had better know what that word means, okay? Okay, and um, just in case, here's the uh, contrast with physics, which also has no definition today. We, we're defining ph philosophy and physics, okay, because those are the two words that we're going to be looking at or contrasting today. And what you look it up in the Wikipedia, says physics, science that studies. Well, we already got a problem with studies because anybody can study and not know anything. You study for the test, you get a zero on, on Friday. So, you know, what does study mean? Does, does a two-year-old who studies, you know, his, his blocks or whatever, is he a scientist or a physicist? Yep. So studies matter, okay, matter, uh, you're close, okay, it's motion and behavior, uh, yeah, okay, you're close again, but then we have a problem that says, through space and time, well, we cannot travel through concepts, okay, uh, try traveling through uh, love, for example, okay, uh, see if you can do that. No, you can't travel through space and time, so they shouldn't use that word through ever for space and time, because space and time are not physical objects. And it says, and the related entities of energy and force, no, energy and force are not entities. Entities are objects, things, those words mean, are synonyms, and energy and force are something else, they're concepts, okay? And so, uh, no, physics, we do not study energy, and we do not study force, time, mass, or charge, or any of those concepts, okay? We don't study love, we don't study intelligence, we don't study... Um, Consciousness, none of those things. Not in physics. I think you can just stop it. We don't study. And, and, and we don't study. <laughs> that explains a lot. We never study. We never study. Okay, study. Never read a book. Any, anybody can study and then not know anything. These books are just for a show back here. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's get to the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. And here you have it. Uh, I know this is going to shock some of you, but it's called the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Probably the number one uh, reference site on the internet for philosophy. That's what it's called. The, Encyclopedia of Philosophy, and this is the page. You can look it up. You don't have to believe me, but this is what you'll find. You'll find all these words are in alphabetical order, and what is missing is the word philosophy. You will not find the word philosophy defined in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy.
Okay, so uh, it gives you an idea how, how important these words are for for philosophers that they never define what philosophy is. I think they just gave up. They're like, eh, it's too hard. Yeah, too then many th things in it. But then there's another notion that people have of what philosophy is. Okay, and they call it the mother of all sciences. Oh. And this is uh, an analysis that a fellow did in Quora. I liked it, so I'm going to put it up here. It says why the question was why is philosophy the mother of all science? And this fellow answers, philosophy is not a science at all. Okay, according to today, okay, to what we have today, the, the definition or the notion we have. The connection between science and philosophy is historical, not conceptual. At one time, the natural sciences were considered a branch of philosophy called natural um, philosophy. The idea that natural philosophy was somehow replaced by science is total BS. Natural philosophy is simply what natural sciences used to be called. Philosophy could be considered the mother of all science for historical reasons, but not for scientific or philosophical ones under modern understandings of these terms. Okay, so this notion that people have that, oh, philosophy is the mother of all science, it precedes science because you have to do some kind of thinking. Well, again, it's because they never defined the word philosophy. First of all, it's a historical issue, and it's very poetic. It does not mean that it's rational, that it has any foundation whatsoever. Okay, so when people say uh, that philosophy is the mother of all sciences, they're talking poetry. That's it. Okay? They're not talking any sensible thing. Okay, so what is philosophy? Let's get to it. And for this, we have to define science first because we're going to include philosophy under science. It's one of the two branches of science. Okay? Uh, this is according to you. Yeah, this is according to this site. Okay? Yeah, Science, rational explanations. Very short definition. The longer you make, the easier it is to tear apart. So never define words, cru crucial words, the foundations of, in this case, science, uh, with lots of words. The more words you put in there, the easier it's going to be to tear apart because there's going to be exceptions. That's the problem. So what is physics? One of the branches. Well, physics is rational explanations of phenomena. Yeah. And what is, yeah, of yeah. things that occur, right? Okay. And then philosophy is the rational explanations of behaviors. Okay, that's how we're going to divide this. We're going to limit it just to behaviors. In the case of physics, we have causes and mechanisms. And in the case of philosophy, we have reasons and purposes why someone does something. Okay? And again, uh, the bread and butter of physics is the object. You need to have objects. And the bread and butter of philosophy, you could say, is the concept Okay, in general terms. So that's how we're going to branch these things out. We're going to uh, define them very specifically so that we can use them consistently. Okay? That's that's where where I'm headed. Okay, so um, if those are the definitions, we've never had philosophers on planet Earth. Okay, not one. Not one. Because what what were they supposed to do? They were supposed to explain behaviors. Now I can't say we've never had any philosophers. I'm saying that all the traditional philosophers were not philosophers. Maybe a psychologist is a philosopher mm -hmm. because he's got to explain, you know, a behavior of maybe one of his patients like or a psychiatrist that. or whatever. So, so he's a, a true philosopher, but they're not considered philosophers. The philosophers are those people who talk about the existence and all this other stuff, which has nothing to do with philosophy and has all to do with physics. Yeah. Okay. And so all these people that we have here, okay, uh, that I put up the other day, uh, uh, Plato, Aristotle, all the Greeks in general, okay, uh, all the way to Ayn Rand and uh, Sartre, John Paul Sartre and uh, Thomas Kuhn. No, no, these were philosophers. They, they did not do philosophy because they never explained anything. I like to uh, uh, do an analogy in saying that uh, this is essentially uh, the Mary Poppins version, okay, and uh, there's a part in Mary Poppins where Mr. Banks, you know the banker, he says, would you be good enough to explain all this, talking to Mary Poppins? And she says, first of all, I would like to make one thing perfectly clear. And Mr. Banks says, yes. And Mary Poppins says, I never explain anything. And that essentially synthesizes, okay, um, what we have today. We don't have explanations either from physics or from philosophy. Okay, so that's why I'm saying that we had no philosophers at least the traditional ones. That's what I'm really referring to. Well, again, and I could make an exception and say that psychologists and maybe psychiatrists, people like that, they are the true genuine philosophers because they try to explain behavior. Could be also a veter veterinarian. I mean, uh, looks at an animal, says the reason this animal behaved this way and that way, and he gives a reason. Then is also a philosopher. Okay, in that in that context, that's where I'm going to limit philosophy. One portion of the bit broad notion that we have today of um, of philosophy. Okay, so I'm going to chop it off there. And uh, so, yeah, under that definition, 
uh, we can reject traditional philosophers, including Ayn Rand. She was not a philosopher. Now, this person uh, gave a couple, uh, one example, and I'm going to analyze that example to show you also why we need to separate physics from philosophy. And this person said, objects exist independent of consciousness, is what she says, meaning Ayn Rand. Okay? And no, that's not what she said. That's not what Ayn Rand said at all. Okay, I want to make sure that people understand that. Ayn Rand did not say that. What did Ayn Rand say? She said the following. Okay, she said, <clears throat> to exist is to be something. And I'm saying, no, she missed something there. It's something plus location. That's what exist means because the word exist belongs exclusively to physics and not at all to philosophy. When you have philosophers who venture into physics not knowing that they crossed the line and they still think they're doing philosophy, well, we have a problem because we, we need to define, chop off the word philosophy so it does not encroach on physics and say, well, we're doing ontology. No, no such monster. You either do physics, like uh, Mr. Rutherford says, or you do stamp collecting, okay? And so uh, the word exists belongs exclusively to physics and it's defined as something plus location. It's got to have location. But here's what Ayn used to say. Uh, this is out of her books, okay? Perceive. She talked about perceiving things, entities, okay? Again, not. Awareness of entities, sight and touch. Again, we remove the observer in science, especially in, um, I'm sorry, in physics. Uh, we don't use the observer. We kill the witness, uh, mafia style, okay? No one is allowed to testify. Something exists, which one, what? Perceives. Absolutely not. Existence and consciousness are axioms you cannot escape. No, consciousness has nothing at all to do with existence. Not at all. We don't care what you perceive. You could be drunk. You could be on, um, on steroids, whatever, up, up your uh, head, you know. So, uh, no, we don't use consciousness at all for existence. A thing is itself. Existence is identity. Well, you can uh, say that A is A, meaning a uh, ball is a ball, no problem. But that doesn't uh, define existence. Existence, you need location as well. That's what she missed. And something needs sight and or touch. Absolutely not. Uh, we don't use the observer. We don't use sight. We don't use touch. We don't use any of the senses except common sense, the least common of all senses. And again, she talked about perceiving entities. So no, uh, the problem with Ayn Rand, she introduced the observer, and when she does that, she goes into religion. She goes into subjectivity and not into physics. Exist belongs exclusively to physics. That word belongs there and there alone. And so here's the definition of exist so that we can compare it against what the Ayn Rand proposed. Exist is physical presence. Very short definition. We keep it as short as we can. What is physical? Object. What is presence? Location. Okay, what is an object? That which has shape. What is location? The set of distances to all other objects that exist. Okay, that are there. And so if God wants to exist, first God has to be an object, a thing. He can't be a concept. You can't say God is love. God is spirit. No, God has to be an object. So you can say God is a man. Looks like a man. Uh, arms, head, whatever, you know. Okay, then we have an object. So far, so good. But you're not done. God has to have distance with respect to everything, every atom in the universe. Right? That means no matter what, something that exists has to be able to answer the question, how far is it from me? No, because how far is a question of math. It, uh, it, this is all qualitative. But it's some, but that has an answer. It's not. Yeah, yeah, but this is the answer. This is, like, this this is, that, what number it is doesn't matter. I'm just saying it's yeah. a binary. It either has some distance to me or it doesn't. Yeah, for that, again, we define distance as separation. There is a separation between my chest and God's chest, one, and then there's a line of direction between me and God. God can hide in any dimension he wants. He can go to 26th dimension of string theory, okay? We don't care. There's got to be a straight line of direction from me to him wherever he wishes to hide. If we can't do that, he does not exist by definition because he does not have location, okay? That's the way we look at it. So it's got to have two things. It's got to be an object. It's got to have location. What is location? The set of distances to all atoms in, in, in the universe, okay, in, in existence. Okay, so the, here are the foundations of physics, okay, to separate from philosophy. These are words that belong exclusively to physics and not at all to philosophy. Anyone touching these words, whether they know it or not, they cross the line into physics, okay? These are the foundations of physics. And I haven't covered every word, but just the most important ones. Here they go. Uh, object, distance, location, motion, exist, and space. Those words form the foundations of physics. They have nothing at all to do with philosophy. We do not deal with entities, which is what Ayn Rand tried to define. We, she, does, she dealt with existence. Not only did she misdefine it because she was, not a, she was not into physics, didn't realize that she crossed the line into physics. And yeah, hopefully she tried to explain to a conscious person that doesn't change anything. Okay? So these words belong exclusively to physics. They do not belong to uh, philosophy at all. 
Okay, so anyone touching these words, whether they know it or not, they cross the line into physics and they are no longer a philosopher or they're not doing philosophy. Okay, and uh, final issue before my son here kills me. Okay, uh, here we have uh, the fallacies. If you're going to define, okay, if you're going to define the word philosophy, first of all, keep it short, very brief. That's my strong recommendation. The more words you put in there, the more if, ands, and buts, uh, the more bases you try to cover, the worse it is. It could it's be easy. complicated. Yeah, yeah well, you, the more complicated you make it, <laughs> the easier it's going to be to tear down for someone who wants to challenge you. Okay, keep that in mind. That's my recommendation. Or but, a friendlier way to <laughs> say it is the harder it is to understand. Also, also, <laughs> yeah. But uh, these are the fallacies. You can't use any of these fallacies because those are not valid arguments to defend your definition. They're the fallacies of authority, of democracy, and of tradition. What is authority? Well, my teacher told me. This is what I learned in college or in high school. Or she knows a lot of things, so she must have yeah, learned that too. Yeah, I mean, the fact that this is how you were raised, or maybe your parents told you this, and you say, well, I think my uh, my folks were right. You know, uh, well, again, a better way to say you can't it use is, it like that. You can't use it as an argument. That's what well, I'm saying. Well, the better way to say it is uh -huh. they were right about the first nine things. Why wouldn't they be right about the tenth one? Yeah, but again, uh, uh, I'm sure Marx was very right about communism, but uh, I, I kind of got away from that. <laughs> uh, fallacy of democracy. The fact that everybody on earth votes for the flat earth does not make it so. Okay, So the fact that more people raise their arms and say, say, oh, mathematical physics is right, it doesn't make it so. That's two plus two equals five, doesn't matter how many people. Yeah, vote for it. You can, vote, you can be in an asylum and all the, uh, you know, <laughs> crazy people, they vote for whatever. <laughs> and you say, well, but you're all crazy. <laughs> yeah, but you're a majority. And so what are you going to do? And then the tradition, the fact that, oh, we've always done it that way. Since the days of the Greeks, that's what philosophy has always been. You're going to change that now, Bill? Uh, and what I can tell you there, there is the following. All these words that I mentioned earlier, they're up for grabs. No one has ever defined them scientifically in the history of life on Earth. And so they're up you for mean, grabs. You, you can define to your satisfaction. <laughs> they're ira it's easier to tear it's them easier, apart. Yeah. And so if you can tear them apart, then I don't care if they have tradition. I don't care if they have democracy behind them or, or uh, what was the uh, authority. Uh, it doesn't make it so. So these words are up for grabs because no one has really defined them scientifically. Everybody uses the word, uh, the definition they find in the ordinary dictionary, which is no, of no use if you bring them into physics because now you're going to run into trouble communicating in a, in a rational environment. Okay? That's why these words need new definitions. So these words are up for grabs to say, Bill, but we've had a long tradition and everybody votes for them and this is what they taught me in college and high school. These are irrelevant arguments. These are not... No, arguments that you can use. They're easy to tear apart.